Welcome on this adventure to learn more about our faith. Last week, we celebrated the Feast of Christ the King, the last Sunday of the liturgical year. Today, we celebrate the first Sunday of Advent. It is the first Sunday of the new liturgical year. Advent is a season when we prepare for the coming of Jesus, who we celebrate at Christmas. Hi, kids! Thank you for sharing your amazing artwork with us week after week on Little Faith Steps. The entries from our local and international friends are colourful and encouraging. We are always inspired by your sharing and beautiful artwork. Keep them coming. This week, we are going to learn about the different names given to Jesus, who is our hope. We will see Father light the first Advent candle of hope at Mass this week. Look out for the colour of the candle and the colour of Father's chasuble. Let us now begin with a prayer and a song to Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus, our hope. Help us to draw close to Jesus in this season of Advent. Holy Spirit, help us to share the hope of Jesus with others. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us sing to our God, who is greater, stronger, and higher than any challenge that we face. He is our hope. Is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hands. He's higher than the skyscraper. He's deeper than the sun. 
kids, and welcome back. Now, let us listen to what the prophet Isaiah said about who Jesus is. Are you ready? Awesome! Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 says, For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Prophet Isaiah lived 700 years before Jesus was born. However, he foretold that a baby was coming. He would be born to a young woman and authority rest upon his shoulders. He must be someone who is very important and has got great power. Isaiah also prophesied that this baby would be known to many by four names. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I wonder what these names mean. Let's find out. Sebastian, Sabine, your mom is here to pick you up. Okay, thanks Auntie Janice. Thanks for helping me in my art project. No problem. Let's go, Sabine. I said, let's go, Sabine, Karis, Elizabeth, Chin. Okay, okay. We can continue the art project tomorrow. Bye, John. Bye. Bye, Auntie Janice. Bye, Janice. Sabine, Karis, Elizabeth, Chin? Wow, that's a long name. We all have a name that was given to us at birth. Names are special because they are unique to each one of us. Let us see what John and Sabine are learning about the significance of names. Hey Sabine, why do you have so many names? I'm only John Lim. John means God is gracious. Well, Sabine is for Saint Sabina. Karis means God's grace and Elizabeth means God is my abundance. My dad said that when Isaiah prophesied about baby Jesus coming into the world, he called him many names because he is deserving of them. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, and many more. Jesus was called many names even before he was born? That's right. I guess for us, our parents hope we will grow into our names. But for Jesus, he is already wonderful and mighty. And more. That's so cool. We now know that the child that Prophet Isaiah was referring to is Jesus. Jesus is called Wonderful Counselor because he is wise and able to guide us out of darkness into the light. He is also called our Mighty God because he has divine power and might. Why is Jesus also called Everlasting Father? Everlasting means forever. So when we call Jesus the Everlasting Father, we are saying that he will be with us forever. Jesus is also the Prince of Peace. Part of Jesus' mission here on earth is to bring peace to all people. In order to receive this peace, we have to welcome Jesus into our hearts. Let us now listen to a story of a saint who pointed others to Jesus, our hope. Hundreds of years before St. John the Baptist was born, the prophet Isaiah described him in the wilderness, crying out, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. As a prophet, John the Baptist announced Jesus' coming. He was called the Baptist, because he called for his followers to be baptized to show repentance for their sins. John and Jesus were cousins and were still babies in their mother's wombs when they met. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, St. John the Baptist, filled with the Holy Spirit, leapt in his mother's womb with great joy. When he grew up, he went away into the wilderness to pray and to await God's message, clothed in camel hair and living only on locusts and wild honey. When the time came to tell people about Jesus the Messiah, John preached to everyone he met and called for them to repent so that they would be ready for Jesus. 
He told people about how the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus at his baptism, and he even encouraged his own disciples to follow Jesus. One day, John saw Jesus coming towards him. He told his disciples, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John the Baptist gave the people of Israel hope by pointing the way to Jesus. St. John the Baptist prepared the way for Jesus by asking his disciples to repent from their sins and pointing the way to Jesus, our hope. Let us learn from him to be prepared for the coming of Jesus at Christmas. Let us sing to Jesus, our way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, and light in the darkness. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. This week's activity, go to our Facebook page, Little Faith Steps. Like our page and share your works in the comment section with us. We can't wait to see them. This week, take some time to ponder on the names of Jesus and how the different names of Jesus bring hope to us. Would you like to be bearers of hope, peace, joy, and love in your home this Advent? 
Here's a daily guide to make your Advent journey meaningful. Find the link to this Advent calendar on our Facebook page, Little Faith Steps. It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag Catholic Mars at home. Let us now listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us in one Mass Minute. Have you ever noticed that Mass during Advent is a little shorter than usual? At the start of Sunday Mass, right after telling God we are sorry for our sins, we usually sing a great hymn of praise called the Gloria. But we don't hear this in Advent at all. Advent is a solemn season of preparing for Jesus' coming, so the Church leaves out joyful hymns like the Gloria. You'll also see Father wear a darker colour, purple. There's another reason we don't sing the Gloria during Advent. Do you remember how it begins? Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. This was first sung by the angels at Bethlehem, announcing the birth of Jesus to the shepherds. In Advent, we wait for Jesus, just like the whole world waited 2,000 years ago. And like the shepherds, we will not hear the Gloria until the still of Christmas night. Thank you, Auntie Estella. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and to learn more about the first candle of the Advent Reef Hope. There's nothing like giving God our hands and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on this first Sunday of Advent, 29 November 2020. We offer up this Mass for all children that they may prepare a room for the Lord in their hearts and wait for His coming with joyful hope. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Light and peace in Jesus Christ, our Lord, be with you. And with your spirit. Lord God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of the peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the Savior of every nation. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we light the candle of this wreath. May the wreath and its light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. And may he come quickly and not delay. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear boys and girls, today is the first Sunday of Advent, a special time when we get ready for the coming of Jesus. And Jesus asked all of us to keep watch for Him so that we will all be ready when He comes. And today, we are going to think about how we can do that, to be ready 
when Jesus comes. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that, gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. You, Lord, yourself are our Father. Our Redeemer is your ancient name. Why, Lord, leave us to stray from your ways and harden our hearts against fearing you? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your inheritance. Oh, that you would tear the heavens open and come down, at your presence, the mountains would melt. No ear has heard, no eye has seen any God, but you act like this for those who trust him. You guide those who act with integrity and keep your ways in mind. You were angry when we were sinners. We had long been rebels against you. We were all like men unclean, all the integrity of ours like filthy clothing. We have all withered like leaves and our sins blow us away like the wind. No one invoked your name or roused himself to catch hold of you. For you hid your face from us and gave us up to the power of our sins. And yet, Lord, you are our father. We the clay, you the potter. We are all the work of your hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bring us back Let your face shine on us And we shall be saved God of hosts, bring us back Let your face shine on us And we shall be saved O shepherd of Israel Look down.
the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ send you grace and peace. I never stop thanking God for all the graces you have received through Jesus Christ. I thank Him that you have been enriched in so many ways, especially in your teachers and preachers. The witness to Christ has indeed been strong among you so that you will not be without any of the gifts of the Spirit while you are waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. And He will keep you steady and without blame until the last day, the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because God, by calling you, has joined you to His Son, Jesus Christ. And God is faithful. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be on your guard, stay awake, because you never know when the time will come. It is like a man travelling abroad. He has gone from home and left his servants in charge, each with his own task and he has told the doorkeeper to stay awake. So stay awake, because you do not know when the master is of the house is coming. Evening, midnight, cock crow, dawn. If he comes unexpectedly, he must not find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all. Stay awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear children, what do you hear in the Gospel today on this first Sunday of Advent? Jesus promised us that one day he would return. And in the Gospel, we see how Jesus is telling us that we must be ready for when he comes again, but that we cannot be exactly sure when will that be. And so we wait. As we don't know when he is coming, we must try to be ready all the time. And although we don't have to stay awake all night because we are tired, we need to sleep, we can go to sleep. This time of Advent, Dear children, it's a time when we especially think about getting ready to welcome Jesus, when we remember his birth at Christmas, and when he comes again in glory. That's why the gospel, Jesus asks us to look out, to keep our eyes upon what's happening around us so that we are ready when he comes. What do you think Jesus wants all of us to see? when we look around us today? Do we sometimes see people who need our help? People who are lonely? People who are sad? People who do not feel well? What do you think Jesus would like us to do when we see people who are sad, lonely, poor or sick? Jesus wants us to do the little that we can, to show kindness, to show understanding, to show love. What will you do next time you see or hear about someone 
who needs your help, maybe at home? How will you make sure you are ready for Jesus when he comes again? And this time of Advent is a journey which we are all invited once again to prepare to welcome the Lord who comes to encounter us. That's why Jesus says to be aware, to be aware, to be, a, uh, to be aware that he comes to us, you know, times that we least expect. And today, on this first Sunday of Advent, we are invited to be vigilant, to await for the Lord with hope. And this season will culminate where? At Christmas. Christmas is a time of joy, a time that we all are expecting and preparing ourselves for. And that is why the season of Advent is really about waiting. We all need to wait sometimes, don't we? We stop at the corner of the streets to wait for uh, the light to turn green before crossing the road. We wait our turn in line at the supermarket or even in school when we want to ask a question, we need to put up our hands, raise our hands and wait for the teacher to call us on before we speak. But some things, of course, are harder to wait for than others. For example, you know, it can be very hard to wait for when we can go for a holiday during this time of pandemic. Uh, difficult to wait for a vacation, maybe to Disneyland. Sometimes it seems like forever until, you know, our birthday gets here and we get to eat the cake and open presents. Today, dear children, the church begins a new season in the church here. A time of waiting, a time of getting ready for Christmas. And during this time of Advent, there are all kinds of special ways in which we are invited to be a part of that helps us to wait, to get ready for the coming of Christ. At the start of this Mass, we have the lighting of the first candle on the Advent wreath. You see that there are four candles arranged beautifully in a circle. And of course, we have one candle that is white that perhaps reminds us that Christ is the light. And on that Christmas Eve, we will light the white candle so that when we come to worship on Christmas, we see all of the candles lit. And you know that Christmas is at hand. A time of waiting will finally be over. So today, let us pray together. Dear God, we thank you for this special time of the year. Help us all to be patient, loving during this time of Advent. And bless us all as we wait for the birthday of Jesus, the light of the world. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God asks us to be ready for when Jesus comes again. And so together let us ask for God's help. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop William, all priests and clergy, that they will not be lacking in any spiritual gifts, but will be blessed with wisdom and guided by the Holy Spirit to prepare the Church during this Advent for the coming of Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, still divided and unable to see God's face in the poor, that they be roused from their sleep to work untiringly for a world where all are fit, sheltered and at peace. We praise you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, that the season of Advent will bring about in its members renewed hope as we seek to live more fully for God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our young people, that they will be filled with a spirituality which finds its basis in love of God, love of self and neighbour, celebration of the sacrament and care of the poor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have wandered away from their relationship with God, that the fond memories and hopes of this season open a doorway to God who continually loves them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold suddenly in our hearts and those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Living and loving God, help us to listen to your word, to be kind and generous and helpful to others, and be ready always to welcome Jesus when he comes. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below Gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise 
in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim the death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer one another the peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away our sins and the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should, should enter under, under my roof, but, but only say, say the word, and my soul, soul shall be healed. healed. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that You are present in the most holy sacrament. I love You above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which 
we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of His only begotten Son and yearn for His coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with His blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may He make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when He comes again in majesty. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks be to God.